the degenerative disc disease is not really a disease, but is part of the natural aging process that affects all of us. Discs that move will, to a certain extent, show signs of wear and tear. So the older we are and the more discs move, the greater the chance that they will show signs of degeneration. These discs that move are most commonly in the cervical and lumbar spine, because that is where we bend. As time passes and we get older, discs will show signs of degeneration and it's completely natural. So it is probably not correct to call it a disease. It can, however, lead to symptoms, and that is when it becomes more important. As we just discussed, uh, this process is entirely natural. It happens more commonly at places that take the most strain. So these are places where the movement is the most in the cervical spine, usually at the C5, 6 and C6, 7 levels, and the lumbar spine at the junction of the moving and fixed spine, which is the lumbosacral junction at the L5-S1 or the L4-5 levels. In people about the age of 50, over 90% will show signs of disc degeneration. So this is an entirely normal phenomenon. Symptoms can happen when there is low back pain. Again, symptoms vary with time and it's entirely natural to have waxing and waning symptoms. To start with, symptoms are of low back pain alone. As time progresses, it can lead to the disc either having a problem where it bulges, where it can press on a nerve, giving rise to pain, weakness, and numbness. Symptoms can vary with time, and the body has its own natural healing mechanism, which improves symptoms given the time and space. Most often, the degenerative discs do not heal in themselves, but the symptoms do get better. In over 90% of patients who have had symptoms of low back pain with the rest of physiotherapy and medication, symptoms do settle. The disc itself does not heal, but the symptoms improve. Over a period of time, the disc loses its height with a change in its biochemical nature in the disc material. And there can be a progression of symptoms leading to some degree of micro movement or pressure on nerves. If the patient has symptoms that are low grade, they can be managed non-surgically and that would probably be the best way to do things. This is the mainstay of treatment. As we just discussed, over 90% of patients do not need surgery or do not need any other invasive modalities of treatment. How can this be prevented from progressing? That is where all the non-invasive options come in, including diet, as in losing weight, correct lifting techniques, as in not lifting heavy objects, bending at the back, but getting the object closer to oneself and lifting it at hips and knees, physiotherapy or back exercises on a regular basis, improving the core strength, not putting on weight, as in decreasing obesity if somebody were obese, all of which would make a long-term difference to a person's uh, back care health. So these are steps that can be taken to prevent things getting worse in the future. However, despite all these measures, there would be a small subset of patients who would need a more active form of treatment. That could include, among other things, steroid injections, either to the facet, the nerve root, or epidural blocks, or in certain Further, small subset of patients, invasive surgery. Surgery could involve surgeries on the disc itself, as in for a degenerative disc disease with a disc prolapse, a microdiscectomy, or in a further small subset of patients, spinal fusions. This is a self-limiting condition and most often does not require any invasive surgical treatment. Lifestyle choices play a significant role in the management of these symptoms. Decreasing obesity, having the correct weight is important. Better exercises, especially for the core muscles, to improve posture and balance is important. 
the other techniques that are used in, in situations where there's an exacerbation of symptoms is to use some form of medication. Medication, again, is not usually recommended in the long-term use, but for short, sharp episodes of pain, they do have a vital role to play. Physiotherapy is important, and that would incorporate, among other things, correct lifting techniques and proper balance. The use of ergonomic tables for sitting and for working is important. These are the different steps that can be taken in the long term to maintain the health of the aging spine.